Uh, my name is Dr. Nicole Gunter. I'm the Collections Manager of Invertebrate Zoology at the Cleveland Museum of Natural History. So this is some taxonomic research studying uh, some Australian dung beetles and it's published in Zootaxa. Uh, this is research that came about through an Australian government uh, funding round called Bush Blitz, which is a biodiversity survey um, of the undocumented species within Australia. So the first thing that we noted uh, was there were very many undescribed species in this. Um, this group. And when we started to look in detail, there was quite a few variations between uh, the species in, in this uh, one genus, uh, Lepanus. So we were actually curious whether it did actually represent one large genus or if there were multiple genera within it. So we started doing an investigation that was primarily led through DNA and molecular techniques to see if we could identify the genetic groups uh, within this lineage of dung beetles. Once we knew how the dung beetles were related to each other, then we started to look further into the systematics and do the taxonomy for the groups. We decided that we would group them into smaller species assemblages based on one particular characteristic. Um, so it's the shape and the grooves along the terminal segment of the abdomen. So once we had these species assemblages, it provided us a framework to look uh, at the genetic variation within. We soon realized that two of our species assemblages were definitely distinct, genetically distinct lineages from Lepanus, the, the main genus that we were looking at, and that these differences were significant enough to establish them as two new genera. So once we knew that these were two new genera, we started looking at the morphological variation um, within the species in these groups. And within them, we had to transfer some species that were previously described in Lepanus to these two, to these two new genera, as well as describing six new species. We also looked at the morphological characters that supported this genetic distinction and these, this establishment of these two new genera. And we found that there were many characters, particularly on their forelegs and also other characters throughout their body that supported their morphological differences. Most of the species of Lepanus, they only have two four tibial teeth. In both of the two new genera, all of the species in them have three four tibial teeth. They also have some really unique characters, like there is a very small brush and comb of setae, the front inner side of the forelegs. They've also got different numbers of groups of hair on the top of the four tibial teeth, and some of them have these little pits on the four femora as well. So there's a large number of characters in combination that support their morphological difference. Part of this grant also covered lots of extensive field work to collect more of the specimens. We critically needed to collect fresh material so we could preserve them um, and be able to get the DNA and extract the DNA and have tissue quality samples to do the phylogenetics behind it. So this meant I got to do lots of field work um, in multiple states in Australia, but also I would take the opportunities that I had to collect with the permits that I had. And for example, one of these new species that are described here, it's only being collected once by myself in a state forest in New South Wales. And this is the only record of this species in existence. So this paper was mainly addressing the taxonomy and just describing the biodiversity. So it is very interesting for us to know that they are three genetically distinct lineages, but they all still look very morphologically similar to each other. And the differences between these genera are very subtle.